good. So, well, somebody need to hear it. We be live. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to all the brothers and sisters that uh, <coughs> may be watching. Now I think about it. Uh, Almighty Yah, give you all the praise and the glory. We thank you for this day. Yah, we are asking that you will be with all the petition for all the different family members. Almighty Yah, for people who needed prayer. Miss um, uh, Shirley and her family. Almighty Yah, uh, ask that you would be uh, with uh, the Williams family and, and, and be with uh, uh, Sister Theresa, her father-in-law. Almighty, be with my stepfather. Almighty Yah, as, as this uh, surgery is coming up soon. Almighty God, I ask that you be with the families over in Crockett County. Yeah. Their children are yeah. suicidal. Yeah. Yeah. Almighty God. Mm -hmm. This is beyond uh, doctors and so we need you, Almighty. Yeah. We need you yeah. to step yeah. in. Yes. Almighty God. Yeah. 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 That should be with Mr. Cunningham, Almighty God. Senior. Almighty God. With the Poston family, Grandma Poston and Mr. Poston, yeah. my mother and 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 and, and uh, Miss Bear family and yeah. Sister Jessica and all the prayers that was uh, the sisters in the shelter and, yeah. and families yeah. and we asked yeah. to be with them and 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 and, and, and uh, Sister uh, Naomi uh, uh, Israel who who praying for her and and her uh, of the difficulties and she's had that you will put healing upon her Almighty God. We hope that we can see her at the feast, but if not, y'all, that you can bring the feast to her home, mm -hmm. Almighty Yah. That when she cry and she pray, her voice will be like a shofar, Almighty Yah. So y'all, we thank you and we praise you. Ask that you would be with the sick, with the poor, Almighty Yah. Be with yeah. the lost, yes. Almighty Yah, yes. and help those of us who are in the way to keep yeah. our way, yeah. Almighty Yah. Not to veer off to the left, yeah. nor veer off to the right. To 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 continue. In this narrow path, this yeah. straight way that takes us to life, Almighty Yah. Yah, we thank you, Almighty Yah. Yahshua HaMashiach, let me pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so a little bit different today. As we always say, this word is for uh, Israel, is for the, the body of Christ, uh, but most importantly, the people that are sick. Yes. The people that they ain't worried about no, 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 no message on hell. They live in hell. They, they don't care about that. That word's for them. People run around suicide on you 13. That word for you. But you gotta be here to get the word. Folks calling and texting and, and, and you gotta come here. Can't help you. word is for those that are lost, those that are poor, those that are sick. You don't think y'all see all the evil and the wickedness and the things that happen to people? This word is for you. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I started my time up. Make sure I treat y'all properly, get y'all out of here. Today, the door and the altar our spiritual checkpoints. And so we are still uh, looking at the sixth month we are in, and Lul, or the sixth month, and in preparation before we get to the seventh month. Before we get there, we have to prepare. Okay, if we, if we prepare for physical things uh, uh, on earth, we prepare for, you know, vacations, we prepare for field trip. We, we do all kind of things and uh, and that's fine, but when it comes to Yah, we have to prepare for Him because He's the ultimate. Right? He's, the, he's the ultimate Father. Ultimate, the ultimate power. So we have to prepare for Him and His things. What are His things? All that you see. What are His? That sun out there. The moon. The stars. The galaxies, yes. the blade of grass, the fly that keep buzzing around you while eating your sandwich, <laughs> everything, the cool breeze, the hot, the, the thickness of the heat, the coolness of the rain. So we have to we, we have to get in tune with him. Yeah, we got to get on his playing field. We always try to flip stuff. We try to make us the center. Of attention it ain't about you, it ain't about us, it's about him. 
Okay. So uh, the door and the altar are spiritual checkpoints. Uh, if 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 uh, on them video games and them, if you go to arcade and race car games, you if you want to get more time added to your time, you got to cross certain checkpoints. Okay, for some of the younger people, you know what I'm talking about. You driving and you cross the checkpoint to get more time. Well, we have checkpoints for our ruach now. Hmm? Today's a checkpoint, ain't it? Amen. Shabbat's a checkpoint. Yes. What you you toss, you turn, you twirl, you get up, you get down. You you unfortunately we fuss, we fight, we got this, we got that, we got work, we got travel, we got bills, we got, and then you have a shabbat. Yeah. You cease. You need to re. Few you need to recharge. You need to be re-energized. You need something from within, right? You need to take it and stick your like stick your phone on a charge and leave it alone. All right, so we come into Shabbat to get recharged, to get refueled. Checkpoint for us. Then you know what? Tomorrow, well after sundown, and we go tomorrow, you do it again. You bust your butt, you do everything you gotta do, and then you get here. Uh Review for, for some, for some, uh, might be first, second time heard this. What were the four I wills of Yah again? Y'all know I'm slow, help me out. I will, I will walk with you. I will be with you. I will walk with you. I will walk with you. I will be in you, dwell with you. I will dwell with you and, and I will be in you. Okay. So we got to understand that, you know, when Yah, when the Father say, I will, this going to happen. It ain't a question, it's not a question of if, it's just when. Right? And where will we be when it happens? Where will our temple be? What will our temple be like? Will we be able to receive what he has to give out? Will our temple pass inspection? Will our temple pass inspection? All right, so we're going to review over the last, quickly, the last two weeks, and then we'll uh, go into today's uh, uh, teaching. So time for review. Right, we we'll start off with the lamenting heart. Right, this is just the beginning. Crying out. Right, it's just the beginning on this journey. It's just the beginning because we forget stuff. That's why you see the phrase memorial zikron in Hebrew for you to remember, because you already knew you was gonna do what? Forget. You already knew you was gonna forget. You need that checkpoint. You need to be reminded to remember that you don't forget. So a lamenting heart, this is just the beginning. This is where we started, right? And some things that from that was that we had to look at Lamentations 3 and 40. Let us search and try our ways and do what? Return. Mm -hmm. Return to the master. Return to the father. Yeah. Return to what is good. Return to what is right. Return. So whatever way I'm going, I got to turn around. Yeah. And I got to go back where I came from. Mm -hmm. Now we got. I got up there highlighted for you. Uh, I'm gonna try this. Hope I don't mess it up. I can't do nothing. <laughs> anyway. You can't. Well, on the. I was trying to highlight this and say, see what I got highlighted. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But I can't do it. Yeah. Anyway, this phrase, that word there, okay, Vanashuva, Vanashuva, all right, is the return. But as we've talked about, when we see that hay in the end, right, and that vowel following that particular vowel in the hay, that means what? Feminine. Feminine. So, the, so let us, let us, that is the bride to be. Let us, is who is this estranged woman that you went away? And now you're going back. Let us, feminine, we all got to return because we're returning back to the king or to the father or to the source. lawgiver or to the source. judge or to the source. Hallelujah. So we're going back to him. So we all become, I'm a man, I become feminine when it comes to him. You a man, you become feminine when it comes to him. Uh oh. Here's what it is. Got him down. Take people. All right. Scaring myself. <laughs> God, have mercy. Fire. But let us search and try our ways and return back to Him. We gotta go back, right? And a lot of times when chaos and, and, 
and, and, and bad stuff happened. Well, what is lamentation? What that follow after? Follow after Jeremiah. Right after what? Babylon. The Babylonians coming in. There's a lot to cry about. Somebody come in to burn your house down and, and beating up on your mom and dad and taking your folks, burn them, shooting them, or kill them, whatever they're doing to them. A lot to cry about, especially when you were supposed to be a representative of somebody. And I fell that far away. We got to come to grips with ourselves. We had to remember, we had to know our carnality. We had to come to grips with ourselves. Like you have to understand you in your own flesh. Right? We have to realize who we are. Right? Our flaws, our weaknesses. From a from a, 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 a sport example, you know, you would tell a player in the off season, work on your game, work on the weak stuff, stuff you can't do. Work on that. Don't worry about your strengths. Well, what do you? Well, then if that's the case, well, then when it comes to the kingdom of Elohim, I got to be working on my weak stuff. He ain't worried about stuff you're already good at. Good for you. Good for me. But your weaknesses, you got to work on that. You got to know the flaws within your own self. Can't be walking around delusional. Got to come to grips with ourselves. Got to know our carnality, right? We all have an aspect of our carnal mind that we probably lean to more than we should. Then we talked about last week, the dressing iniquity. This was, this was a hush mouth message here where nobody's saying nothing. <laughs> That's good, though. It means we think it. When we think it. Can push, come shove, it's all said and done. Now, I got to find myself worried to stand for the Son of Man. I got to escape all this stuff. Then I got to stand for the Son of Man. The faith of facts now. That's a fact. So we're talking about addressing iniquity last week, the buried roots, the deep, 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 deep roots. A lot of some of these roots, they are, yeah, they, they, they meet some of my roots. And then there's some that I, they came from a generation before me, two generations before me, three generations before me, right? We talk about the avon, iniquity avon, which may want guilt or punishment for perverse and depraved actions. Okay? Right? They, we, we, sometimes we get uh, iniquity, sin, and transgression. We ball them all up. They're completely three different words. Right, but the alone, the iniquity is the guilt or punishment that I've earned. Right? Sin is the spot. It's the mark. It means he has missed the way. She is off target. Iniquity will be the punishment coming. The sin is the mark. Cain was what? Marked. Transgression is the action. Okay. We looked at it in the Shemot or Exodus 20 and 4. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, Yah, am a, uh, 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 thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Right? And we looked, and we got, got iniquity in green for you, and we got a bone in, uh, I'm sorry, iniquity in yellow, and a bone down there highlighted for you, just so you can see it in the text. Okay? Was the avon avot albinim, right? Avon avot Albanim, the iniquity of the fathers upon all, upon the, the, the children, plural. To so the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. The severity of the matter. Like, yeah, most of good. Now, he's great. He's awesome. But I tell you what, now, we, we will be crossing them now. We, we cross them too much. One reason why a lot of people don't want to come. Because they're fearful. They scared. They chicken now. Because if I go there, he going to say something. He going to go in that book. It ain't going to be a piece of a piece of a scripture. It's going to be a lot of book. And sometimes we got, when we come face to face with the book, this is what some folks do. They just close the book. I don't have nothing to do with it. So I just not go. Ruach pulling you. Angels pushing you. You dreaming, seeing stuff. I, 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 I ain't going. That don't make no sense. But once again, when the bombs start dropping, people start running. And probably sooner or later. Like I saw something. I ain't even I ain't, I ain't got off into it, but I saw something about us and Iran and Saudi Arabia. 
So like I said, when them bombs was, <laughs> once again, going back, I'm going to get back on this, going back to that 400 year prophecy, if it's true, then the judgments will follow, because that's what he said. He didn't say, I'm going to come get your behind. He just said, I'm going to judge that nation. So if that 400 is true, if it's true, what the scripture said was, I'm a judge. Right? And it wasn't the judge, like, it was the, no, 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 I'm going to, like, kick behind judge. I forgot the Hebrew word, I ain't going to freestyle and mess it up. Back on this. Looking diligently, least any man fail of the grace of God, least any root of bitterness, 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 springing up trouble, you, and thereby many be what? Defiled. Scripture is clear about the being defiled and where you can and cannot go in him. There's a standard. I understand why people want to get rid of New Testament. There's a standard. That makes sense. So at least any root of bitterness springing up you, springing up in you, trouble you, thereby may be defiled, Hebrews 12 and 15. So we addressed the root of bitterness things within. Okay, we took a closer look at Haggai, right? One and seven from a Hebraic perspective, right? Thus saith Yahweh host, Yahuwah Zebaot, consider your ways, right? And we looked at, I can't do that I like thing, but consider yellow, and we have here uh, Simu, okay? And then we got your ways in English, you got a whole bunch of Hebrew left. The green and the yellow. So we can look at the green here, we understand that that's what? La Vevchem. Right? So that was that, right? Your what? Heart. Heart. Right? So to the group, your hearts. Mm -hmm. And you got this all that's down there. We looked at the blue letter Bible. Right? It's got our evidence. <laughs> Here's my man. I don't know. We're just going to put it up there. Tin ink translated fight. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to study. Once again, I ain't worried about trying to pronounce stuff right. I want to be able to read it. So I can have understanding. I just want to understand it. And make stuff clear to the people of the Most High. Make it clear as possible. And you know what? That put us in even more trouble. Because now you know more. Mm -hmm. My bad. <laughs> Maybe not. So consider your ways. The Lavev Kim, your heart. They didn't translate it. And we talked about the Derek, right? Derek, and Derek was a noun describing the way we walk, the journey, right? So as we are on live, real quick, Acts uh, uh, 24 and 14, really quick, brother, uh, uh, talking about the, the, way, the way we walk, the journey we are partaking. This is the path, right? A descriptive noun of us, the manner of life we live, our character on display. He has some, some testimonies today, right? Your character being on display, okay? Go ahead, brother. 14. 24 and 14. But this I confess unto thee, uh -huh. that after the way which A they... After the what? The way. The what? The way. The way. Go ahead. Which they call hearsay. So they're going to call it a heresy now. They're going to call it a heresy. They're going to call, mm -hmm. call you a nut job and, and, mm -hmm. and call you all kind of stuff. Your screws loose. You are, you're off your rock. You, you're doing too much. So if he had to go through the way, you got to go through it. That don't make no sense. We can't skate by. Okay, good you ride your skateboard. We ain't skating by now. Go ahead, read. So worship I, uh, Yahuwah of my fathers, uh -huh. believing all things which are written. Believing in what? All things. All? All. Mm. Believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. Which are written where? In the law and the prophets. Hold that right there. Real quick. John 6, 44. I'm going to come right back to you, brother. It said, all things written in the law and the prophets. When you're on the way. When you walk in the way. No one is able to come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, mm -hmm. and I shall raise him up in the last day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do uh, 45. And it has been written in the prophets. It has been what? It has been written mm. in the prophets. In the who? In the prophets. Amen. Go ahead. Keep reading, Shaw. Thank you, brother. Go ahead. Keep pick, pick right back up where you were, Shaw. 
and have hope towards Yah, uh -huh. which they themselves also allow, mm. that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, mm -hmm. both of the just and the unjust. Mm. And herein do I exercise myself. Do I do what? Exercise myself. So as in the manner of life that you live, the way you, are, how you exercise, your, how you train, just how you train your ruach every day. Some folks, they live their life in gym, don't they? Don't, but some folks, they train every day. But when it comes to your character and your life and the manner that you live, is it every day? Go ahead. And herein do I exercise myself mm -hmm. to have always a conscience void of offense toward Yah. To have a what? A conscience, uh, to, uh, to have always a conscience void of offense toward Yah. To have your mind free towards Yah. To have your mind free towards Yah. But you ain't always saying I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Every time you turn around, we're sorry about something. Forgive me about this. Forgive me about that. So if we keep ourselves in the way, if we tighten up the bolts on the ship, we can be on that narrow path. We got to tighten our stuff up. Right. Them folks was tight now. Right. Everybody want to act like they them and dread and dread. Man, get your life together and just handle the simple stuff. Mm -hmm. Too many cartoon characters. That's why we trying to fool everybody. Don't play. I'm doing that cartoon kitty stuff. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. You do this, you have to change your life. Jobs, some jobs are going to have to go. Some careers got to go. Y'all snatched me, drug me. See, you ain't on no sideline. You got it. It, Look, if you, if you in here, you in here. You're going to have to stand. You got to sacrifice. People don't want to sacrifice. Was that all that verse? And it says, and, to, and toward men. Toward men. That mean it mean everybody. Mm -hmm. Toward men. Okay, I did mess up. All right, so going back to this. I don't mind saying I messed up. Uh, that last phrase in blue, all there him was considering our ways upon the path, the journey, or the life that we live. But the ways is really talking about your heart. So consider your heart in the journey, the direction, the manner of life where you are going. Mm -hmm. Consider your heart. Okay. okay. Now, I had that verse written out, but I guess I didn't say it. But anyway, so, but that's, that was that. So now let's turn to Luke. Luke 15, be in verse 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, never get there. So we can't do nothing without, without his prayer, without his ruach. I'm done. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Got nothing gonna happen. Got to have the spirit or the presence of Elohim. You got to. You got to have it within you individually. It's got to be in the assembly or the congregation or where the people gather. It has to be there. It's pointless. If, if, if it ain't there, it's pointless. Better off going back to the club. There'll be some spirits there. <laughs> it'll, be some, it'll be some stuff on the, from the other side there. You jump in that and do that. But if his, if his presence ain't here, man, it's pointless. We in Luke 15, verse 11. It reads, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Forgive me, I'm sorry, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered it all together, he took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Some shape, form, or fashion, and, and not necessarily the babies, but we have went off and lived in a way where we squandered something. Money, time, relationships, opportunity, you squandered it. For a, a small stint, when I was hustling, Making fast money in 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 in, in uh, Texas and 
had them connect to the essays, huh? <laughs> getting that good stuff across the border, making fast money. And I tell people this story. I said, when I look back, I ain't got nothing from that time. I was buying chains and shoes and jerseys. I ain't got a, I ain't got a, a piece of material from that time. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. Wasting time. Just drawing more uh, debt on myself. Racking up more debt. That's what Christianity, unfortunately, makes you think now. You can just swipe that credit card now. You can swipe that thing. Swipe. Swipe that credit card. Swipe. Swipe. Go to the mall. Swipe. Swipe that. You ain't got to pay. Tell you something. We know this book tells you. You do. Somebody got to pay that bill. Y'all sure like, look, I ain't going up on that cross again now. I ain't being put on public shame, not twice. I ain't doing that again. Folks racking up this debt. They're like, no, nah, you know, the blood on the Lord, the Lord got it. No, you got that, bro. You got it. That's, the, that's part of the mentality. And it sounds good. It's, it makes it easier for you to escape, for you to kind of settle and nest in your ways. You can still be you. Now some fairy tale, he gonna, he gonna come and make me. No, you have to get up and work. Hmm. We don't have to fight. But anyway, we've all had some kind of something where we have done something, lived something, went somewhere. Even if you ain't just in portions of life, we're just kind of, I'm not wasting time. It's waste, just wasting time. So verse 14, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And that's a lot of times how stuff happens. We're doing stuff we ain't supposed to do. And then at some point in time, you feel good. Sin feel good. Your, the, your, well, your flesh take it as feeling good. Your senses, your carnality takes it as good. And then all of a sudden, that rush ends. You chase a certain kind of high. That rush, it ends. It only lasts for so long, and you're chasing it. For people that's done that, they understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So he spent all day. He wrote, there was a mighty famine in the land. He began to be in war. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him to his fields to feed swine. Mm -hmm. And he would fain have filled his belly with the tusk that the swine did eat, but no man gave him to him. Mm -hmm. And when he had came to himself, when he had came to himself, when he came to himself, All right. when he came to yeah. himself, mm -hmm. it was time to turn around. Yeah. We have to get to points where when we come to ourselves, what's that phrase? Man? Snap out of it. Snap out of it. You know, I, I was a, a big pothead, like smoking, for a long time. Folks in here know. But a little bit of time, I was do, doing the party drugs, the party pills, popping X's and stuff, going to the club. And I had a night where I took a X pill in the mirror, getting, calling myself, getting fresh, getting ready, and I had a moment in the mirror. Mm. Jesus. Mm. What are you doing? Mm. What's wrong with you? Mm. True story. Mm. What are you doing? And what's wrong with you? At least to say, I ain't have a good night that night. <laughs> you ruin everything, huh? Ruin all the dope and pills I was on, drank I was on, ruin all that was ruined now. Because you know what's playing through my mind all night? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? What, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? That's why you have to have the Ruach in you. So we can see y'all's big picture. Yes. Because it's like an alarm going off from within. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? And then we have to turn around. And then we go, we come to our senses. We come to our senses. So the young man in this parable, verse 17, when he came to himself and said, How look, that, look, you know you're serious. He said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough? to spare, and I perish with hunger. I would rather go to my father, I would say to him, Father, I have sinned against Shammai. Mm -hmm. We have to think about the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You put your father in heaven 
first. Yeah. Who, uh, uh, somebody said in class this morning, didn't it? You got to put the Father first. Heavenly matters first. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And before the, uh, Romans 15 and 3 and 4. Brother, give me uh, uh, John 4, 23 through 24. What the young man said, he said, I sin before heaven and thee. Go ahead, brother, when you get the song, uh, 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 Romans 15 and 3 and 4. For even Hamashiach pleased not himself, uh -huh. but as it is written. As it is written. The reproaches of them that reproach thee. The reproaches of them that reproach thee. What happened? Fell on me. They fell on me. Mm. Mm. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Oh my goodness. Were written for our learning. Uh -huh. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures uh -huh. might have hope. So when things get hard, the scriptures is your patience and your comfort. But you got to be in them. And not just being in them. But we got to direct. We got to walk in them. It has to be a part of our life. I think as he read in Acts uh, 24, you've got to exercise in the way. You have to train yourself in this because it's not going to always be pretty. Go ahead. But the hour is coming, uh -huh. and now is, when the true worshiper shall with worship. With a who? The true worshiper uh -huh. shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. Uh -huh. For the Father also does seek such to worship him. Uh -huh. Elohim is spirit. He's what? Elohim is spirit. Mm. And those who worship him need to worship in spirit and truth. In spirit and in truth. Mm. So back in uh, Luke now, 15 and 8, we'll look at this, so 15 and 18. And I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against the Shamaim and before thee. So we just read it in, in Romans 15 and 3 that. He said that Yahshua said the reproaches of them that reproached thee. He said, man, they fell on me. Mm -hmm. So then the young man in verse 19 says, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Mm -hmm. That's some humility right there. Mm -hmm. Look what he said. Make me as one of thy hired Servants. That's some humility right there. I ain't your son no more. Just I'll water sheep. I'll uh I'll stay up all night. I'll I'll go learn how to be a watchman and, and, and watch for the more them. I just, you know. I ain't your son no more. That that's humility. Our master, our savior, our redeemer, he humbled himself and he left his estate. Mm -hmm to come down here. So we find ourselves having to humble ourselves like our teacher, like our master. And that's hard sometimes. Because we got reasons. We come up with reasons not to humble ourselves. Yeah. We make up excuses on why not I cannot take myself as low as Yahshua did. Because someone did something to me. Yes. Or it's not fair. Or whatever we come up with. We come up with reasons why we cannot humble ourselves. But the one who's supposed to redeem me went to the ultimate line of humility for me. And then my return is half effort. Sometimey. So so. In and out. Wishy washy. how serious it gets. Yeah. When we start pulling back the layers of this word. And I start, and that's why, so once again, New Testament, I know, I know a bunch of people want to get rid of it. Whatever. That's why they write how they write. Say, hey, work out your salvation with what? Fear, Fear and trembling. Because see, they saw the lamb. The lamb was cold. Look, the lamb was so cold, they was like, look, what, won't you rain down fire from heaven? It's like, man, you don't know what you're saying. You don't know what you asked for. Unfortunately, at the brightness of his coming. The mighty Malachim coming will. It's not going to be pretty. The folks ain't going to have you. Ain't, folks, look, Revelation, look, the, 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 look, it's so cold that people are going to be trying to hide. Y'all seen that prepper show? 
But they didn't kind of stop showing. There was a prepper show used to come on. The preppers, folks is prepping, they got basements. They got underground bunkers. Man, this thing, if, if such and such tons of so-and-so hit, I'm straight. Book done already called you out. So they going to go on the mountains and caves and, and come and get you. Book done already said it. That's why I was like, you have to know him now. Amen. You have to know him. We said this a couple weeks ago, he going to see you in your neck. He going to see you in your appearance. He going to see you naked now. We ain't talking about with your clothes off or on. He going to see within. Mm -hmm. Every chamber and corridor of your heart. And we ain't we ain't out nothing that man. But we are going somewhere. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Now we know the rest of this. My point for pulling out this passage was that in our returning, right, the, the humbleness, the humility that we are got, we have got to take ourselves to. Okay? And as long as we have time, we got time in learning how to humble ourselves. Because it ain't, look, this ain't calculus. You know, you, you didn't jump in calculus class and start doing it. You had to learn it. Well, if it comes to walking this way, yeah. Living this way, you got to learn. Now, while there's time to learn, get to learning. But at some point, we ain't gonna have that time. That's right. It's gonna be game on. It's gonna be like when the movie, but they be doing action. You ain't got time to say, hey, "What was that line again? What was my verse again?" Action, action. <clears throat> We have to see that Yah has a system. He's already established a system. He established a sacrificial system. He established a, uh, a priesthood system. We got our civil laws. We talked about things in Torah study. Uh, last week, those different civil laws just amongst people. We got ceremonial laws. This time of year, you do this. For the harvest, you do this. We have different laws, okay? And uh, But one of the most important things within the Torah that is not always taught, when we come out of Christianity, it's that there's no mercy in there. There's all kind of mercy in that Torah. Yes, yes. Amen. There's so much mercy in there. Mm -hmm. So much forgiveness in there. And he put it in the front of the book. Mm -hmm. He put it right there for that to be part of your learning, right? What this makes, what nation has such a law in the sight of all these nations? And there's such a wise understanding of people because of this law. So we're going to talk about we'll talk, uh, the door. We're going to talk about the door. Okay, the door. We got two Hebrew words for door. We're not going to get too deep into the two Hebrew words for door today. Before we'll another day, not really the point for today. But one of them, and a lot of the verses we're going to look at in our Torah is going to be petach. Petach, that's that first one. Okay. Y'all see that people that do know how to read it. Y'all, y'all, y'all see that. Y'all understand that. Okay. What's that second word? People that do, do know how to read it. Close. Dalet. 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 That's good. 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 Alright, so we have these two words for door. That first word, patak, you see opening to an entrance. Pay always represents what? Mouth. 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 So when we're are talking about our mouth, <coughs> our mouth is like a door. There are certain songs about, you know, guard my lips, the entrance of my mouth, from the abundance of the heart. The mouth. It's like, so this was coming out of your mouth. mouth. What's coming out of your temple? So our mouth is like a door. So when we see that Hebrew word pay, pay always means mouth. We're all familiar with Pharaoh, correct? Pharaoh. Which paro. Pahro in Hebrew, and it means mouth of Ra, mouth of evil. Mouth of evil. Okay, so um, that top word, opening, entrance, thinking of a mouth. Okay, uh, things that we say, things that we speak. Um, a woman's womb is like a door. Right, that's, that's important that we teach young men not to go into these doors. As I was talking to my son, you know, you don't go there till you get married. You don't go there. You have to teach our young women, you got to keep your door closed. Mm -hmm. Keep your door closed. It's a sacred, a secret place. It's sacred. 
the high priest, only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. Holy of Holies. When a man and a woman come together in the sight of matrimony, that woman is like a little temple, and that man is like the high priest going to the Holy of Holies. And you know what? You know, this this man, most I cook, man, this stuff is deep. If it's done the right way, the first time that priest go in, it should be what? Blood. You won't believe this. When Aharon had to go into behind the Holy of Holies, you know what he got to have with him? Blood. Blood. That's just book, though. So see, see how he, got, he got this stuff set up right. So there's so many things that has to be corrected in our minds. Our action is so much. This is why there's so much mercy available for us because we're way off track. We are way off track. So I said the other, other week, I ain't, you don't know how horse. You see me on a high horse? I'm telling you, get some watermelons, dodgeballs, knock me off that horse now. Not, not look, cause we got a long way to go. We got, we got to be humble and hungry, working towards on this straight narrow path. Uh, Exodus twenty nine. Talk about the door for a little bit. I asked my son something. I said, I, be I better say something for somebody else. Tell him something. I'm, I'm like, man, what you know? He said, well, I know that's word. You the boyfriend. Woo. Well, it's going to get the rapping. <laughs> it's going to get the rapping. Man, no, oh, okay. All right. Exodus 29. We'll be in verse 1. Exodus 29, verse 1. Hallelujah, whenever you get to Exodus 29 and 1. Both sides good. Exodus 29 and 1, and it reads, And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them that hallow them to minister unto me in the priest's office. So we are looking at the consecration of the Kohanim, of the priests, and also of Aaron. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, Unleavened bread and cakes, unleavened tempered with oil, wafers unleavened, anointed with oil, of wheat and flour shalt thou make them. Thou shalt put them into one basket and bring them to the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons, thou shalt bring them into the door of the con of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt wash them with water. I'll say that again. Thou shalt bring them into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. Wash them with water. Wash them with water. The little bells start going off. We say wash them with water. What was the one thing we talked about last week about our iniquity? Someone got to come and get us and do what? And wash us with water. So when it comes to this turning back and going back to him, I've got to get to the door. Because one thing for sure that can happen at the door is I can get what? Wash with water. Wash with water. Well, that's what Aaron and you taking that text out of context. First Peter. Let's roll. First Peter, second chapter. Let's get there real quick. Keep your finger next to 29. We're going right back. I was already fired up for this word, but I tell you, when that word came out, look, you, you ain't got to tell me nothing. There ain't no, and look, ain't no more assurance. Look, y'all remember when the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, prophet Elisha and them young men were scared? Remember that, Elisha? He was like, man, Lord, if you just open up their eyes. Open up them folks' eyes. They look up on the mountains. All they see is chariots, horsemen, and soldiers in fire. <laughs> what we waiting on? What we waiting on? Let's go. <laughs> I ain't scared of nothing. I'm, I'm ready to roll now. I'm going to take a word. little word don't come out, man, where his brew is. Where his presence ain't. If his hand ain't there, that stuff ain't happening. That's a fact. Y'all, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2. Y'all there? 1 Peter 2nd chapter, verse 1, and it reads, Wherefore laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings, as newborn babes desire sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming also is a living stone, 
disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. You are lively stones and build up a spiritual house and holy, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahshua HaMashiach. Stop right there. You, us, are lively stones. What for? To build up a spiritual house. Why? Because you're a holy priest. Good. We scroll down to verse 9. But you are a chosen generation of royal priests. Good. Was he talking to a bunch of Aaronites? Just a specifically a Levitical crowd out there? Mm. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. A royal priesthood, a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood. Now let's go back to the, uh, 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 Exodus 29. Because right, we can't worry about what was happening at one time. We just know what everything was doing at four times was for my wow. learning. And I have to take and apply as I'm going what for. Because we have a different timeline than where they are. We we on down, we way on down the line. We way on down the timeline. So look what the most high said in verse 29 and 4. And Aaron and his sons, thou shalt bring them to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt wash them with water. People say, I want to rule and reign. I want to be a high priest in the kingdom. Well, you know what? You've got to go to the door. You gotta get washed with water. Verse 5. Thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat, the robe of the ephod, the ephod, the breastplate, and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. Thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and put the holy crown upon his mitre. Thou shalt take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Thou shalt bring the sons and put coats upon them. Thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. And thou shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. Thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord. Before the Lord. Where? By the door. Yes, sir. Of the tabernacle of who? The congregation. Thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord. By the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Who's the congregation? Israel. So, the congregation has to meet where? At the door. Everybody jumping up and asking, I'm Israel, I'm Israel. Then get your behind to the door. Right. You want in? Get to the door. Don't you break the law. You slap women upside their head, making them do all this stupid stuff. Get your behind to the door. You a teacher. You a pastor. Get your people to the door. Folks jumping up and down with a jump on and be teaching and preaching. You got to go through the fire. You got to lose some stuff. Yeah. You got to lose and he'll grow you. Because yeah. we will, we are human. We ain't going to take our sin. He's got to force us down or take away from us. Mm. Verse 11 again. And thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So it's popping at the door. The door's a jumping place. But you gotta get to the door. So we gotta get to the door. Oh, well, I went out of order. We already read 1 Peter 2, 1 through 11. Now let's go to Hebrews 10. Okay, Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. We're gonna be in uh Verse 11 is hallelujah. You get to verse 11. Hallelujah. Hebrews uh, chapter 10. I'm going to read a chunk of this chapter now. Hebrews 10 and 11, and it reads, And every priest standeth daily, ministering in 
offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Elohim, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. That's some strong stuff right there. That's why you got to have the Ruach in you so we can see Yah's big picture. So he put up, he set up a system. He set it up. And, it, it, and the system is just to get you to practice. So that when you see it, you'll know it. Now our adversary has had people practicing for years, thousands of years, the wrong system. So when the beast comes into them, when the false prophet comes into them, you're going to relate to false practices. And you're going to relate to that. That's why Yah had a system set up so that when the Mashiach come, some of them got it. They said, that's him. That's him. Those who did not want that to be him, it's simple. It goes against the system we've got set up. And it's not the, it's not the, as he said, the blueprint. Right? It's a blueprint, but we got all this add-ins and we got all these preservatives added into it. A bunch of ascertain added into it. Fourteen, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, them that are set apart. Whereof the rock HaKodesh also is a witness for us, for after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the master, I will put my laws into their hearts. Right, we talked about last week about the iniquity and the root being deep in our what? Heart. So these things got to be pulled out. We got to get the digging. Because the heart has to be soft, so they can write on. Yeah. Like I can do all the stuff I did back on Mount Sinai with your folks. Now I ain't, I ain't going through all that. It's gonna be real simple on your heart. I ain't, I'm not going through all that stuff with y'all here. I will put my laws into their hearts, and their what? Mine. Will I write them? And their very important, their sins and iniquities. Will I remember no more? So the mark, the mark of the sin, and then the iniquity. The guilt or the punishment. He said, I, he said I'm not going to remember. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having, therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yahshua. To be able to go through a what? Door. We got to get to the door now. Verse 20. By a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us, through the veil. That is to say his flesh. So we understand the tabernacle. Or the structure of the temple. That a. You, you technically. If we look at the tabernacle in the wilderness. You got three doors. You got the door of the congregation. You got the door of the tent. Then you got a veil. You got three doors. Everybody follow Okay, the, the, the out, out in the wilderness, the door of the congregation, the door of the tent. When you go in, you got your menorah, you got your incense, and behind the incense there's a that's a door. Verse 20 again, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil. That's to say his flesh. So because he humbled himself and came all the way down here. He was born like a baby and, 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 and lived and went through every temptation and, and everything. We're, he went through everything and, and aced everything. He tore the veil, but the books of that is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of Elohim. So this same one is now the high priest in heaven. That's mercy. Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water. So you got to get to the door. Because it was already written in your Torah that when you have Aaron and his sons that get consecrated and they go through the process, bring them to the door that I may wash them with water. And we want to be a royal priest. I'm going to rule and reign with Christ. So and so, then you got to get your behind the door to get washed. They got physically washed. We got to be washed. Our minds, our conscience. Verse 23. Let us hope at the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. 
Let us consider one another to provoke to love to do good works. 25, not forsaking the assembling of, our, uh, our assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. Yes. And so much more as you see the day approaching. That's why you got to come together. Because somebody might have an encouraging word from you, for you, and they ain't even trying to give you, you know, because don't sometimes people know, like, you, we keep stuff for ourselves. Yeah. So then you come to the assembly, and then sister so-and-so, a brother so-and-so give you a hug and they say something, you be like, hey, I was just dreaming about it. <laughs> I just was, I couldn't understand that. And then so-and-so, so then I know that my Elohim is with me. Hallelujah. Because he spoke through her or through him to me. Yeah. Amen. That Look, when that, when that happens, he's like, this man has done it again. He done done it again. And I done forgot about what he did four months ago. Mm -hmm. I forgot what he did last year. Probably. I forgot what happened when, when my so-and-so was sick five years. I, I forgot, so he has to remind us to remember not to forget him. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Exodus 29. That's why, we, that's why that Torah not full of mercy. I'm going to tell you, we are, we, are, we are messed up people. Hmm. Push come shove, and all he and all he's saying is, I just I just really just want your best. Yeah. That's really all I want. I just want your best. I don't expect y'all to do what Moses did or what David did. But I just want your best in your time in your era. Something we find in the Torah about about Noah and his what generation. Yeah. Noah and his generation. What's it going to say about Jeremy and his generation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's it going to say about you and your generation? Mm -hmm. You, 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 And anybody watching in your generation, what's it going to say? All right. Say, so, man, that Vonna boy, he ain't do his best. Mm. He ain't do his best. I put more in I put more. I put more in than that. I expected more. I expected a whole lot more. You think he gonna lie? He ain't gonna lie. He be like, yeah, that bottom boy, man, he kicked he kiss him behind. I said, boy, no. I say Exodus 29. Now we're gonna be in verse 32. Okay, 32. And Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram, the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they shall eat those things with the atonement was made to consecrate, to sanctify them, but the strangers shall not eat thereof because they are all holy. So we're, this, this section is for talking about what you're going to do when we consecrate the priest, Aaron and his son. This is the process. I think this is uh, in uh, Numbers uh, 5 or 6. Or, or, and it's in Numbers. This is right after. This is when uh, Nadab and Dabu died. Okay? <laughs> so, so, this, all this is, so it's talking about what we're going to do. Verse 34, and if, all, and if all of the flesh of the consecration of the bread remain until the morning, thou shalt burn the remainder with fire, it shall not be eaten because it is holy. Thus shalt thou do unto the Aaron and to his sons according to all things that I have commanded thee. Seven days thou shalt consecrate them, and thou shalt offer every day a bullet for the sin offering for atonement. Thou shalt cleanse the altar which thou hast made atonement for. Thou shalt anoint it and sanctify it. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for an altar and sanctify it. It shall be an altar most holy. Okay, so we're going from the door of the congregation. See how it's going? Talking about the priest, and and and, and in the door of the congregation is called. Now we're kind of flip, sitting over to the altar. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause he gave Moses the pattern in the mount. So the way that everything established is the way God told him to. Mm -hmm. Uh. Uh, 38. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar two lambs of the first year day by day continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, the other lamb thou shalt offer at evening. And with the one lamb a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of hen of beaten oil and the fourth part of hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb thou shalt offer at evening, and thou shalt uh, thereto according to the meat offering of the morning and according to the drink offering thereof for a sweet savor an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay, everybody on the screen. Now we're in Exodus 29, 42. 42, 42, so I got you up here. 
Okay. Uh, it shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tent of meeting before the Lord where I will meet with you. Yeah. To do what, Master? To speak there unto thee. So at the door of the tent of meeting, or the tent of congregation, different translations, before the Lord. All caps. So I got in Hebrew for you. Lefne, right? Lefne Yahuwah. So ain't no question who gonna be there. At the where? Door. This is what I need to meet with you. I gotta meet you at the door now. So in your Torah, and we are told that Yahuwah will meet you at the door of the tent of the congregation. I'll meet with the priest, I'll meet with Aaron, I'll meet with the whole house of Israel at the door. Very important. Panim. So when we see this word here, uh, lifne, right? This is the panim face. Face. You know, when you kids and, and when you're on the playground and somebody trying to punk you or bully you and or, or somebody talking about you, what's something you say? You better not say it to my Amen. face. Or you better get out my face. So technically what this means is, should be a continual burnt offering throughout your generation at the door of the tent of the meeting at the face of the Lord where I will meet with you. I ain't making up the zebra right there. So when we're at the door, we're meeting someone face to face. But you know what Yahshua said? He said, look now, you got to be categorized to escape all these things and be able to do what? Stand. Stand. So it ain't nothing new. It's just something true. Mm -hmm. That made me face to face now. But you know, I can't nobody see the face of y'all live. That's true. So I wonder who at this door. That's true. I wonder who at this door. Mm -hmm. Psalms 23. One through six and reads, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my, who's, who's my shepherd? The Lord, the master, he's my shepherd. I shall not want, he make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my what? Soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, no rock. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy. So we see how this mercy is in the Torah. Mm -hmm. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I tell you what, before you get in this house, you won't believe where you got to go to. The door. So, at the door, if we're going strictly off of what we read in the Torah, justice is at the door. Truth is at the door. Safety is at the door. Mercy is at the door. Love is at the door. Opportunity is at the door. Chance to get right is at the door. A chance to come in is at the door. Everything you need, your hope is at the door. That's what the book said. Well, if they read the fourth time written for my learning, through the comfort and patience of the scriptures, I might have what? So I got to get to the door. Yeah. I got to get to the door so that I can go in. The young man that went and squandered all his stuff, we didn't read it, but he was said, I got to go back to my father. Yeah. And his father sees him and goes to him. And what the father, the father brought him back in. Yes. Oh, so when yeah. we're going back, and when I get to the door, the purpose of you coming to the door is for someone to bring you in. But Ephesians, Shah will tell you, this thing a mystery now, the relationship between Yahshua, Shah, Mashiach, and the church. It's a mystery. Because he said, I'm going to bring you and present you to myself. Yeah. Lost my place. 
Leviticus 1 and 3. In his, uh, no, I'm sorry, I got you, I got you right here, got you right here. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will. Where? At the door of the tabernacle of the who? Congregation. Before who? The, before the panim of him. So we got to come with the right heart now. When you come to the door. You got to come with the right heart. Once again, the Elohim we serve, he judge your heart. These other rascals and, and ambassadors that done fell down from the shaman and left their own estate, they, they just want blood. Mm. That's all they want is blood. That's why the, the Mayans and the Aztecs, I'm getting them mixed up, but one of them two, they had so many heart sacrifices. Which one? Both of them, both of them did it. So that part, of, so you, they're worshiping someone, but it ain't him. They're worshiping another Elohim, and they just want blood. Mm. Hey, that's want blood. The Carthaginians. Hebrews who migrated over to North Africa. Hannibal. Right? You know what they were doing? Same sacrifices. Hannibal. Baal. Them deeds want blood. <laughs> Most of us, I just want your best. I just want your best. John 10. He's going to get to the meat of the mouth. John 10. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead and start reading. John, I know you're taking notes. I'm sorry. I know you're taking notes. Go ahead and start reading. John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. he that entereth not by the door into the, sh into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, mm -hmm. the same is a thief. And a robber. Man, you know I'm slow. Keep on reading. That's good. Keep yeah. on reading. But he that entered in by the door. He didn't enter in by the what? By the door. What is he? Is the shepherd of the sheep. Well, I'm on the screen here. You know, look. What did that, what did that thing say? The Lord is my shepherd. Go ahead. Keep reading. To him that porter openeth. Uh-huh. And the sheep hear his voice. Uh-huh. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. He does what? Call his she own sheep by name and leadeth them out. He lead them out. Mm. Go ahead. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. He does what? Mm -hmm. He goeth before them. I wonder if it's like in Psalms 23 how he says, man, look, I will fear neither thou my, or my, 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 my rod, what, and my staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. So I'll be following him, I'll be following because we know his voice. Well, look, when your mind messed up, when we distracted, we got all kind of stuff going on. Look, that's when them fiery darts going inside your head. Mm -hmm. You don't know who you don't know what is left and what's right. Confused. It's like we like the people on the sitcoms uh, where they got to make a decision. And they got the little uh, white person and white angel here and the person in dark here. <laughs> but if we don't know the shepherd. And we don't understand that I got to get to the door. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. And a stranger will they not follow, mm -hmm. but will flee from him. That's why you got to know his voice. Go ahead. But they know not the voice of strangers. Mm -hmm. This parable spake Yeshua unto them, but they understood not. They didn't what, understand. Mm -hmm. but they it understood didn't make sense not. to them. Mm -hmm. They need to help on the test. They need to help on the test. Look, kids being there. Okay. I said, man, this is a test. I can't give you no answers. Mm -hmm. You're taking the quiz. I can't help you. You got to think. Mm -hmm. I asked you if you needed time before the time to start the test. Did you need to read some more? You said, no, you were straight. You got to take this test. Because you didn't know. We in a test right now. We are in a test right now. What do we know? What do you what do you know, Mom? Mm. What do you know? Go ahead. But they understood not what things they were uh -huh. which he spake unto them. Mm. Then said Yeshua unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the what? I am the door of the sheep. I am the what? The door of the sheep. So when your Torah was told that all the priests and then all of Israel, you got to meet 
at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. He said, my panim, mm -hmm. my face, my presence will be there before you at the door. Leviticus said that when you come, come on a volunteer, come on come your own will. Anybody, look, he ain't gonna drag you to the door. Yeah. I ain't gonna, you gotta go, you gotta wanna go on your own. Mm -hmm. You gotta want to go, you gotta want to grow, you gotta want to embrace the word, you gotta want the Ruach. Then that brother read in there, get, get, uh, John 4 and 23 again. What is he looking for? 23 and 24. But the hour is coming. But the what? Hour is coming. If the hour was coming then, then what, how close is it now? If it was close then, well, what about now? Go ahead. And now it is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father also does seek such to worship him. So, this is what the Father wants. The ultimate supreme power said, This is what I want. Right? This is why when you get in a marriage and you're in a relationship, you have to learn to, you know, work with the other person. And you got to know what they want. And you got to provide for them those things. And when you know what someone wants and you don't do it, well, why don't you do it? Are you selfish? Mm. Are you prideful? Mm. I can't get that. I don't want to get that home. Well, then if I can't do that for her, mm. then I would do it for him. Yeah. Now I'm a hypocrite. Well, who read? <laughs> Elohim is spirit, and those who worship him need to worship in spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. in truth. Can't, can't, can't mess this up. Can't mess this up. Sorry, sweet. Was that all of the brother? That was it. Okay, thank you, sir. Sorry. Uh, then go back to John 10. I don't know where you at, brother. Verse 8, go ahead. All that ever came before me uh -huh. are thieves and robbers. Thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Mm. I am the door. I'm the what? I am the door. Mm. By me, if any man enter in. Do what now? Enter in. So you cannot go in unless you get to the door. And Yahshua is like, I'm the door. Mm. He said, they didn't get it. He said, okay, I'm going to say it again. I'm the door of the sheep. Mm -hmm. But what sheep? Like, just right here what David was saying. Mm. But see, you searching the scriptures for eternal life. Yeah. But they are those that testify of me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. By me, if any man enter in, mm -hmm. he shall be saved. He shall be what? Saved. Mm. And shall go in and out and find pastures. Man, he, he didn't say that. He didn't say find pastures. Because mm -hmm. I see pastures right here. Mm -hmm. I see that right here. In the, in, in the scriptures where it was written. Mm. But this is my hope. Mm. This is my comfort. This is my patience. Mm. This is what's supposed to keep me when things ain't right. Yes. When things is tight. Father. Folks is sick. Job ain't right. Money funny. Mm -hmm. All that stuff. Car ain't right. Uh, uh, family. All that stuff. This is supposed to keep me. So I know when things, when, when I have got to get to the door. Because at the door, yes. there's better pastures on the other side. Okay. But I cannot go through, because if I go a different way, the book told me I'm a thief and a robber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The thief cometh not, uh -huh. but for to steal, mm. and to kill, mm -hmm. and to destroy. Mm. I am come that they might have life. That they might have what? Life. Uh huh. And that they might have it more abundantly. So he just he didn't say I'm a, I come that you have life, but I'm coming that you might have life and more abundant life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See now we're talking about things that are heavenly. Mm -hmm. We ain't going there today, but in that first Corinthians 15, we had that first man, that Adam, that natural man of the earth. You know what he brought? And he brought that. Because he said, Do not eat from this tree. Mm -hmm. You know what they did? They ate. The and you know what happened? Death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the second man, who's not natural, he's heavenly. Mm -hmm. He's more divine. This second man, he's going to bring life. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring life. Yeah. 
So how the first man, which is of the Eretz, of the earth, he brought death. The second man of the Shammai, he comes, he brings life. Now we get to yeah. eternal life. Now we're talking about why the Torah, the mercy system was set up that if you meet me at my face at the door and you come with a good heart, I'll let you in. Yeah. But you have to be a sheep and hear his voice. Mm -hmm. You've got to get to the door. But there are other voices that can lead you another way. Amen. How do you know that? Go on Facebook. <laughs> go on Facebook. TV in. Go where you want to go. You'll find the different voices that will lead you astray. This is when the rubber meet the road now. He wants us to be able to live with him, to be these priests and kings and rule and reign with him. But there's a process. He's like, I ain't, he's like I'm not going to mess with the process. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, mm -hmm. whose own the sheep are not, mm -hmm. seeth the wolf coming, mm -hmm. and leaveth the sheep, mm -hmm. and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. He does what? Careth not for the sheep. That's why I said earlier, like it's a shame now. Teachers, pastors, or raised little cards up, gotta get you folks to the door now. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if you look. I just gotta, I just gotta get, you to, get you to the door. Mm. Because when you get to the door, when you individually get to the door, someone else is there. Because mm. you know what happens when you get to the door? I gotta work on my own salvation. The book already said, I, I gotta work on my own salvation. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna be at the door with uh, Chris, well, you know, I ain't, no, she, she on her own. I ain't gonna be with her, she on her own. Because I'm in line too. When I get up there, I'm on my own. Yeah. Certain standards. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd, oh, yeah. and know my sheep, and am knowing the mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. Mm -hmm. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Uh -huh. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, uh -oh. them also I must bring, mm. and they shall hear my voice. See, this is where when people get into ethnicity too much. Because mm. I don't know people's ears now. I don't know their ears. But their ears is listening, wanting to hear from the shepherd. We just, we just, we just mouthpieces. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the earth is his, yeah. right? And the yeah. fullness thereof. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who all he. We just got to do our best to be the best representatives mm -hmm. and to direct and to walk away that exudes my character. Mm -hmm. So if even if I'm at a job, I ain't got to act like a clown. I ain't got to act all crazy. And they say, yeah, I already know you. I know you. I know you. You good. I'm going to fight for you. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's how y'all do stuff, though. You like to do stuff in the dark. Catch off guard. Man, most of something else. Go ahead, finish that up. We'll stop at 18, bro. All right. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Mm -hmm. Therefore doth my father love me, mm -hmm. because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. Mm. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, mm -hmm. and I have power to take it again. Mm. This commandment have I received of my father. So everything's coming from the father now. Yeah. So everything's coming from him. All right. That was John 10, 1 through 18. On the screen, I got for you. Uh, Revelation 3, 6 to 8. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth no man openeth. I know thy works, as I've said before thee, an open door, and no man can shut it. But thou hast little strength. So we got little strength. All you can do is what he said. He said what? But you've kept my word. Yes. And it's not done what? Denied my Amen. name. Amen. Speak for itself. So we, gotta, we gotta roll. All right, the altar. The altar. So as we was looking, when we get to the door, when you get to the door of the tabernacle and you enter in, the altar is right there. 
So I got to the door. Now I got the altar. Matthew 11. Matthew 11. 28 through 30. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. I'm on fire. I said Matthew 11. I started going back to the Torah. I'm on fire. Matthew 11, 28. Go ahead, bro. You go ahead and read. Come unto me, uh -huh. all ye that labor. Now he said what now? Come unto me. Come unto me. Mm -hmm. Now where, now, now where you going to go to him at? You got to get to that door, don't you? You got to get to the door. Go ahead. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you what? Rest. Mm. Take my yoke upon you, uh -huh. and learn of me, uh -huh. for I am meek and lowly in heart, mm. and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Rest for what? Unto your soul. Now, didn't we see this in Psalms 23, 1 through 6, that when you get to these green pastures, that he's leading you somewhere, and that he will restore my soul. Hallelujah. But this don't happen, because this is the shepherd, and the shepherd is saying, hey, I'm the door. And you got to come into the door first before I can let you in on the inside. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? I had to let you in. You got to come to the door first. Everything in the Torah happened at the door first. And then when you come in, mm -hmm. go ahead. For my yoke is easy mm -hmm. and my burden is light. And my burden is light. Mm -hmm. So let's sort of turn to Exodus 40. Exodus 40. Exodus 40 and 6. Just going to look at where things are at and make sure we know I ain't freestyling or nothing. Exodus 40 and 6, and it reads, And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Okay? And in 29, same chapter, And he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering as Yah commanded Moses. So the altar is stationed as soon as you come past the door. Mm. Where things get burnt up. Mm. This is where whatever you whatever you brought to the door, right. you understand me? Whatever you brought to the door right. has to go into the altar. But we just read in Matthew 11 that when you come unto him, yes. right, that he wants you to let go of your what? Load. Mm -hmm. yes. He wants you to let go of your load. First, you got to come to the door. Mm -hmm. Now, I've gotten myself to the door, and I have to enter in. So when he lets me enter in, now I'm in, there's an altar here, and there's fire burning. Mm -hmm. And whatever I have, mm -hmm. sheep, goat, ram, lamb, it's got to go into the... <laughs> Fire. I, 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 look, I, 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 chicken, green, no. <laughs> she was going in, though. I'm not going to lie. Chicken, what? I said, oh, okay. I need to go over there. You can't. Oh, y'all ain't right. That's why I came forward and look, Israel, see, y'all silly people now. Uh, <laughs> so, the altar is stationed. To where we are to drop things off. Now Yahshua was very clear. He was very clear. I am, I am the door. Yes. He's the door. Hallelujah. Make no doubts about it. Now, and they didn't understand. He was talking, going back to the Torah, that I am the door. That you are to meet at, to meet me at my face. That's why he'll say something. He'll say, man, you've been with me all this time. You don't know the Father. He would look at me in my face all this time. And you say you've never seen the Father? Man, you see my face, you see his face. Yes. So the so in the field, so the Panim, the presence at the door in the wilderness is the same face. And Yahshua said, I'm that door. I'm that door. I know some of them. All you know is he that door. He's the door there, he's the door here. Okay. So the altar is after. Okay. Leviticus 6. Leviticus 6. Brother, uh, 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 I'm Ronnie, you ready to give me John 6, I'm sorry, John 5, 13 through 47. Everybody at Leviticus 6. We'll be in verse 9. The 
Leviticus 6, verse 9, it says, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law to burn offering. It is the burn offering because the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, his linen breeches. He shall put upon his flesh and take upon the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar. He shall put them beside the altar. He shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp to a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. It shall not be put out. So the altar has a continual fire. And the fire is to never go out. It is to never go out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall be burning upon the altar, shall never go out. And this is the law of the meat offering. Mm -hmm. And the sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar. I went too far, I'm sorry. So the, the, the point is that the fire on the altar, the altar burning, shall never, ever go out. Go ahead, Brother Reed. But I have a greater witness than that of Yochanan. Mm -hmm. For the works of the Father gave me to accomplish mm. the works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Mm. And the Father who sent me, he bore witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. Mm. And you do not have his word staying in you because you do not believe him who sent, whom he sent. Mm. You search the scriptures because you think you possess everlasting life. You do what? You search the scriptures because you think you possess everlasting life. Now later, hold right, now later he said, and John, he said that I've come to bring you life and then life more abundantly. So he's telling you how to get this life. So you can look in here and try to get eternal life. I'm telling you that if you want to have life and more abundantly, you got to come to the door. Go ahead, brother. Pick back up. And these are the ones that bear witness of me. Mm. But you do not desire to come to me in order to possess life. Mm -hmm. I do not receive esteem from men, but I know you, that you do not have the love of Elohim in you. Mm. I have come in my Father's name. I've come in who? I have come in my Father's name. One more time. I have come in my Father's name. Amen. And you do not receive me. Mm -hmm. If another comes in his own name, you will receive. But didn't he say that earlier about the sheep and the sheep not listen to other voices? Mm -hmm. So that lets you know if you're a sheep or not. You listen to anything and everything that comes through your ear hole. Mm. Go ahead. How are you able to believe when you are receiving esteem from one another mm. and the esteem that is from the only Elohim you do not see? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you. Moshe, in whom you have set your expectation. Mm. For if you believe Moshe, if you, you believe have, too, if mm. you believe Moshe, mm. you would have believed me. Since he wrote about me. Hush your mouth. Say it one more time. For if you believe Moshe, mm -hmm. you would have believed me since he wrote about me. I wonder where he wrote it. I wonder where Moses wrote about a man. Mm -hmm. Stuff like the door. Mm -hmm. Maybe about this altar. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and finish up. But if you do not believe his writings, how should you believe my words? So he's telling you that what I'm speaking is Torah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That was John uh, 5 36 through 47. John 5, 36 to 47. Now let's turn to Exodus 27. Exodus 27. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the greens. <laughs> greens, chicken, no. <laughs> Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Some greens and chicken. Oh, there was the old, uh, some of them 80 babies. Y'all know the old Goody Mob song. Though. He been helping the fried chicken macaroni. Uh, I don't like macaroni and cheese. I like chicken and greens. I, I don't know. I'm not macaroni and cheese. I like hot water cornbread. That's the old school. I know. I ain't made it. Hot water. Look, my grandmama now, look, she makes, man, hot water cornbread. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hot water. Mm -hmm. You know something good when like, people can't even make it no more. Like, you know, that's good. I like, can't even make it no more. Exodus uh, 27 and 1, it reads, Thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood. Five cubits long, five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square. The height thereof shall be three cubits. Thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be with the same, and thou shalt overlay with brass. Thou shalt make his pans, receive his ashes and his shovels, his basins, his flesh hooks, his fire pans, the vessels thereof. Thou shalt make with brass. Thou shalt make for it a great, uh, 
Brave network brass, and upon the net thou shalt make four brazen rings in the four corners thereof, and thou shalt put it under the cupboards of the altar beneath, that it net might be even to the midst of the altar. Thou shalt make staffs for the altar, staffs of shittim wood, and overlay them with brass. And the staff shall be put into the rings, the staffs of it upon the two sides of the altar to bear it, hollow with boards. Thou shalt make it as it was showed thee in the mount, so they shall make it. So Moses is doing exactly what Yah told him in the mount. And thou shalt make, no, okay, yeah, 21 through 8. Okay. All right, so that was a description of the altar of burnt offering. Okay. Uh, and thou shalt anoint, verse uh, uh, Exodus 40 and 10, thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all his vessels and sanctify the altar. It shall be most, and, the, and, and be an altar most holy. So this altar is most holy. It is most holy. And there were certain descriptions about the altar, right? We had brass, right? shittim wood, or acacia wood, fire. Three big descriptions about this altar. Okay, brass was one of them. Uh, brother, give me Revelations 1 and 15. You go ahead and give me Matthew uh, 27, 28 through 29. And then can somebody else give me Deuteronomy 4 and 24? And then can somebody give me Hebrews 12 and 29? Can I give you Deuteronomy 4 and 24? Mm-hmm. All right, now, so we're on brass right here. We're going to look at Revelation 1 and 15. And his feet like burnished brass. His what? His feet like burnished brass. Mm. And it refined in a, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So a description of Yahshua is that his feet was like what? Burnished brass. Burnt brass. Now what was the altar covered with again? Brass. Brass. But he said burnt brass. You know, I could imagine the inside of the altar. Because the fire is to be ever ever burning. So the inside of the altar will be like what? Burnt brass. Hmm. The inside of the altar should look like burnt brass. And the writer described Yahshua's legs as burnt brass. Why burnt brass? But he said, you start, to turn, you start to do scripture for eternal life. He said, I told you, Moses is right about me. So once you leave the door, which he claimed, he said, I am the door. You've got to go to the altar. And you've got to leave whatever you've got. You've got to put that in the fire. So first is brass. Wood. Whoever got Matthew, go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. 20 and 29. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns. A what? A crown of thorns. Mm. They put it upon his head. Mm. And a reed in his right hand. And they um, bowed the knee before him. And mocked him saying, Hail King of the Jews. Now the altar was made of what kind of wood? Shittim wood. Shittim wood. There's another name for shittim. It's called acacia. From the acacia tree. And the acacia tree is extremely thorny. And you find this tree in the region where they live. What they put on his head? A crown of thorns. A crown of thorns. But he said in the scriptures it was written to me. Huh. Got to do around 4 and 24. For Yah, Elohim is a consuming fire. He's a what? A consuming fire. A consuming. I wonder if the consuming fire ever stops. I wonder if it takes a break. It just burn, baby, burn. Go ahead. Even, even a jealous Yah. Mm. So this fire on the altar is burning, and you are putting things in the fire to be burnt up. Right? You came to the door for a certain reason. Right? Either it was a 
sin offering, burnt offering, peace offering, fellowship. You came for something. And then you had to put or bring whatever you got. You had to put that in the fire. Who got Hebrews 12? Hebrews 12 and 29. For our God is a consuming fire. Mm. Consuming fire. So we have three things where the altar is made of brass and Yahshua's legs are described as being burnt breath, as if he was standing in fire. Mm. We have Yahshua, we know he's a king. He folks don't put wood, thorny wood in his head like a crown. Hmm. Fire doesn't burn enough. It's supposed to stay burning on the altar. And Yah is a, is, a, is a jealous God of a burning fire. And in Hebrews 12 and 22, he is a consuming fire. And then uh, uh, we get Yahshua making a statement. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give the, unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is ever to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. One. I'm going to turn to Daniel 3. My son said something interesting the other day. He said, man, you ain't been in Daniel's in a long time. He said, you ain't been in Daniel's in a long time. Said, man, you're right. You're right. So Daniel 3. So now we want to see if we can find something that will correlate Yeshua being in the fire. Because the description was clear. It lived it was like burnt brass. And after you leave the door, you got to get to the altar. So Daniel's 3. Um, let's start. Let's scroll down. We know this. Let's get to uh, 22. The, the uh, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, one bad Negro. They said they ain't going in. But they're not bound down. Okay. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot and the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. After these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound to the midst of the burning fiery furnace. But Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said to his counselors, Did we not cast three men abound in the midst of fire. They answered and said unto the king, true old king, he answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the fourth form is like of the son of Elohim. So, somebody was in the fire with them in the fire pit. Let him loose and just kind of walking around. And the only way they could describe him was saying that he had the appearance of the son of Elohim. So in Daniel 3, someone was in the fire pit with them. This, we're going to tie this all together really quick here. So if Yahshua is the door, when we get to the altar, when we get to the fire and the burning, and he says, Come unto me, all you that are laden, all you that have heavy burdens. Let go mm -hmm. and put them in the altar. Yeah. Yahshua is so into us yeah. that he's in the fire with you. Yeah. Thank you. He's in the fire with you. The adversary's job is to make you think that you solo, Dolo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you solo. But the book says that he goes into the fire with you. With you. So when they do, when when Yochanan describes him, all he can say is legs like burnt brass, mm -hmm. like the inside of the altar. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to put your sin, sin, whatever, whatever you put on the altar. Mm -hmm. So we have Yahshua being an example of the altar. Once you get to the door, you get to the altar, and you have to leave or un let your load go. Mm -hmm. But we hang on to it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 
So we have Yahshua being that picture or image in the fire. That's why his legs is described as being burnt brass. So we know that he will go or he is in the fire with us. Okay, let me get uh, 1 Peter 4 and 12. Uh, I'll try it real quick. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. The what kind of trial? The fiery trial, mm. which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's sufferings, mm -hmm. that when his glory shall be revealed, mm -hmm. ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. Go on to 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, mm -hmm. happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of Yah resteth upon you. Mm -hmm. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is dwelt by. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going to close in Hebrews 12. Uh, so we're looking at Yahshua, Hamashiach, as the door, but he's also the altar. And that the God you serve is willing to go in the fire with you. He's willing to burn up things that we need to let go. Our problem is that we keep them. We find ourselves being like Rebecca. And we keep them idols. We hide them, we sit on them. And we got to come to a point where I think what Jacob has said, if you find the idol on anybody, what did Jacob say? Kill them. So we want to be this woman returning, going back. We want to get to the door and Put stuff in the altar and then keeps up in the back pocket. Well, Yitzchak said, if you find it on them, you find an idol on them, kill them. That's just book, man. Like he's like, I am the altar. Bring it unto me. While we keep it, I don't know. Hebrews twelve and one. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with such great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does also beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, and he should be weary and faint in your minds. Ye you have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Got to stand up, got to be strong. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourge every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Right? So the father will come and get you when you're coming back, and the father will bow behind whenever we need. Amen. But if he be without chastenment, whereof all are partakers, and you're bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh who corrected us, or abandoned us, or were not there, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of the Spirits and live? Yes. For they verily for a few days chastened us after our own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Remember, Aaron and his sons had to come to the door to be washed and consecrated. And then we have Yahshua is going to establish his kingdom. And he's going to have uh, priests and kings. We've got to go through that same process because it's already put in the book. But for us in this flesh, i got to get to the door. And when I get to the door, I gotta, when I get to that altar, i got to throw it all in the altar now. We've got to stop hanging on to stuff. We got to, you know, so as we've been saying... Uh, I'm, I'm done. We've been saying prepare, prepare, prepare physically and spiritually. All right, you are smarter than a squirrel. Okay, you are more than a squirrel. Squirrel store stuff. We've got to be prepared for the feast and things like that. Okay, um, the prayer line uh, and uh, uh, Bible study. At some point, we'll probably change the time because we were doing it at 8:30. That's just what time I was getting off work. But uh, we'll have other people. Uh, I know Brother Aaron been doing doing a good job. Uh, we'll we'll we'll. 
you know, probably push the time a little bit earlier, make try to make it a little bit more convenient. And um, and then as we always, you know, told I got by Shem Yahshua, uh, the website and the email contact information. And uh, but you know, that's his his will now is that we get we get to that door. And he want to meet with us and he wants to let us in. We gotta be willing to go in. Got willing to go in. And not everybody willing to go in. And I ain't talking about Sunday folks. I'm, I'm, just, I'm talking about people on this side, on, on the Shabbat side, on the Hebrew side, Messianic side, Torah side. Not everybody want to go in. Not everybody want to make that kind of commitment. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that being said, all praise to Yah, to the words of understanding, to open up of the scriptures. Um, this lets us know the importance of the Spirit that we got to have. Um, uh, just what He wants. So, uh, that being said, peace and shalom. shalom.